Hello! I want to thank you all uh, for just all the likes and nice comments that were put out on my daughter's video that I put out a week or so ago. It is probably the fastest growing video on my channel. When I created it, I was a little concerned that people wouldn't like it. Um, and I also, when I was editing it, I wanted to edit it shorter so it would be a little more, you know, less drawn out. But I was worried that if I edited it too much, people wouldn't really think that she was doing what she was doing. So it was longer than I had intended. But besides, she got two thumbs downs, which you're always going to get two thumbs down. She got so many likes, so many views, and so many nice comments. Uh, so I just want to thank you all, and uh, Ember will definitely occasionally be joining me in other videos in the future. She had a great time uh, with that video, and she's excited that you guys liked it. So thank you again for that. I do want to address, so out of all that, there were two negative comments. One was just some guy who wrote, so sad, which I don't understand that comment. Uh, and the other one was a valid concern. Uh, the guy basically said, you know, I don't want to be a, I'll say a prick, that's not what he said, but but I think this is fake. And at first I'm thinking, okay, he doesn't think my daughter can really do these things at five, which I 100% promise you she can. She does it daily, she loves using her computer. But his concern was valid. He was concerned was that he thought it was impossible to turn the light on and off from her laptop, which was probably more of a valid concern 10 years ago. I think most people realize there's a lot of home automation uh, devices in the world now. Uh, and the way we're doing this, there's two different ways I've shown in videos, and I, I'll leave links to those uh, at the end of this video probably, and I get replied in a comment. But let me just quickly go over and explain what's going on uh, when she's running her light command. So right here is a little box next to some of Ember's artwork because she made herself a little uh, connect the dots thing. Um, it's a wooden box that I made and I have a video on my second channel where I made this wooden box and I put one of these in there. This is an ESP8266 chip which is a like an Arduino uh, with a wireless chip in it. It could be an access point or a client. It could run as a web client or a web server. The one in here is running as a web server and it's connected to my local Wi-Fi. And it is connected to one of these things. So uh, these are uh, a transmitter and a receiver running at uh, 433 megahertz. And literally you can get a transmitter and receiver for about $2, so a dollar a piece. And these are about $3. So we got about four dollars worth of hardware in here and so I can connect to the ESP8266 as if it was a web server meaning that I can use a web browser or a program like wget or curl and I send a signal to it with a, either a post or a get request I can't remember it's a, it's a get request uh, with a certain numeric code in it and it sends that code to this which sends out a signal to one of these which is a Zap outlet, which are about $5 a piece, that come with a remote like this. So basically, when I press a button on this remote, it's sending a numeric value through the airwaves, and all these devices read it, and if it's the right code for this device, it will turn on, and if I send a different numeric value, because there's on and off buttons, I can turn it off. And that's all my daughter is doing to control this. I've also done videos on smart plugs uh, that are actually running Linux, uh, like I think it was called the Cancun, Cancun plug, uh, which is running Linux, which you were able to hack and get a root access on. And again, same thing, I run, run a wget request directly to the outlet. So there's a little intermediate here, but this is a lot cheaper because those, when I was buying them, and it's been a while, were about 20 bucks a pop, where these are $5 a pop. You can get five of them for $25 and two remotes, actually a little less than $5. And we have this extra piece of hardware in the middle, but it actually makes it easier because those Cancun plugs I got set up on my Wi-Fi and all this stuff, where one of these I plug in, and I can record the uh, signal being sent out by the remote and then replay it through my device here. But these also have a button on the side to, so they can go in learn mode. So I just make up a random numeric number that I send to this device. I hold down this button while it's plugged into the wall for a couple of seconds, and then send the signal there, and it learns what signal this thing's sending out, and now I can turn this outlet on and off. Uh, through Wi-Fi to this device and then from that device at 433 megahertz through the airwaves. So that's how I do it. It's cheap, $5 an outlet. Big drawback to that is that it has to be done 
through a wall plug so I can only use lamps, but at the same time, I have these, which I got for Christmas in 2016 and still have not even tried using yet. Uh, I got three of these, and again, they're, they're a few dollars a piece, but it's a outlet that you can, uh, a socket, you screw it into your light bulb fixture and then you screw your light bulb into here. Also running at 433 megahertz, comes with a remote, so there you can control, and they're also programmable, so you can program all three to be, work at the same signal. So there, now I should be able to turn lights on and off as long as it's a light fixture that this can fit into, which is rather large, but some chandeliers might be able to take it. Um, and the other drawback to this is that you still have the light switch. If someone turns off the light switch, you won't be able to turn this on. Uh, which actually, I have something for that. I got these, again, probably about a year ago. Uh, a few of them. I ordered them off at eBay. So this is one big button. I got three little push buttons here, again running at 433 megahertz. So theoretically, I could hardwire my light switches and then these stick on the wall and act like light switches. And these were like $3 a pop. And I knew they were cheap, but they're a lot cheaper quality than I originally thought. And I really don't want these things on my wall. So, so I don't know, that's one of the reasons I still haven't tried using those things yet. Uh, but regardless, I could have my light fixtures running the same way the outlets are running and with a simple wget or curl command or just open up a link in the web browser I can turn lights on and off or other devices that are plugged into the sockets on and off from my shelf, from any computer, from my phone. I mean that's what I use it for most. I can just go to a link on my phone and it turns the light on. Go to another link, it turns it off. Actually I have push buttons that send the HTTP request. But the user who, uh, the viewer who posted that comment I understand your concern uh, that it does seem weird someone turning light on and off from a computer, but it's 2018. I've talked about two options here, smart plugs that are running Linux, uh, these uh, wireless uh, outlets and sockets that run at 433 megahertz that are really cheap. But there's also things like the Wink Hub, which I don't have one, although a viewer recently told me he was going to send me one and I never received it, and that was a while ago and I completely forgot about that till now. I don't know. Um, but there's lots of ways that you can turn lights and other devices on and off from your computer through your Wi-Fi or other wireless signals which you can connect through to through Wi-Fi or, or even Bluetooth which I don't mess with much. Um, so that's it. I understand your concern. But again, 2008, yeah this would have seemed far-fetched but not possible because back in the early 2000s, 2000, 2000, 2001, I actually worked for a company uh, that installed I didn't call it back then, but smart lighting systems. The, the brand name of the devices we put in were, were uh, Lutron systems. And uh, back then, it, we would put them in these million dollar homes. And there were these big modules, and it was used when you're building a new home, they would run wires to these modules. And each module was over a thousand dollars our cost before we marked it up for the client. And they had to go into panels, and the wires had to be run. So you're looking at like at least a thousand dollars per set of lights in a house. And in most cases, they were just controlled by buttons. So each, each word, there would be a switch that would actually be an eight button uh, panel and you can press a button and it would turn on sets of lights and my job was to program those. It was more of data input but I was programming them if then statements kind of type thing where if this button pressed turn on this set of lights, this set of lights, and this set of lights at 50% strength or you bring push this button this set of lights comes on slowly dims up to 80% over three seconds. That's the type of thing I programmed and for the most part it was done by those uh, uh, wall switches which were directly wired to a panel usually in the garage or a closet somewhere and uh, then there were if you had already had a house built there were wireless ones which were really expensive but those devices also had the ability to hook into your phone lines again this is 2000 2001 you know high speed internet was a thing but not really around yet just like home automation and we could program it so people could dial in with their phone and hit one to turn on you know the lights in the living room so if you're on your way home you could you know get your lights on before you got there but there was also an option to dial in through a modem which we never really set for clients but we could troubleshoot that way to where we would use it you know dial up to dial into their house we dial their number and then we could turn lights on and off from our laptops so you know not too far from what we're doing here only through you know regular, you know, pop phone lines and extreme cost difference. I mean, really now we have 
what they had, these multi-million dollar houses had that cost thousands of dollars to turn on one set of lights, we can do for under ten dollars, easy. Um, so, yeah, it's nothing new. It's not that hard to do. Detailed tutorials on my second page. Uh, this particular setup, or before that, I did uh, one on my page, uh, on this channel here, on uh, using the Cancun smart plugs. I'll try to put links to both those at the end of this video. But I just want to clarify. I thank you for watching, and uh, I hope this, you know, puts any doubt to your mind that the video of my daughter working on her computer was 100% real. I thank you for watching, and as always, I hope that you have a great day.